The NBA always has some interesting pieces of news going on, and the past few weeks haven't been any different. So stay tuned to today's video as we are going to discuss Josh Giddy's unbelievable rookie season after an unpredictable injury. First up, we have Josh Giddy's unbelievable rookie season after an unpredictable injury. Josh Giddy has been doing incredibly well over the past NBA season, but it seems like his ongoing reign over the NBA rookie scene is coming to an end. He had a record-breaking rookie NBA campaign, but because of an unpredictable injury, it looks like the Australian is being ruled out for the rest of the season. It was just confirmed by Oklahoma City Thunder coach Mark Danew that Giddy will no longer play again during this season, and as he had been sidelined since late February because of hip soreness, it's a tricky injury that's a little unpredictable, Danew said. I would not say it met or didn't meet an expectation. We didn't really have an expectation, though it's awful that his insane career career-defining rookie season is coming to an end. That doesn't take away from what he has accomplished whilst on the court over the past few months. Giddy took home Western Conference Rookie of the Month, ROTM, honors four months in a row, quickly establishing himself as a key part of Oklahoma City's rebuild. The Australian took the NBA world by storm after lighting up Madison Square Garden in February, putting up a career-high 28 points, along with 11 rebounds and 12 assists. In an overtime time win over the New York Knicks, which meant he joined Oscar Robertson as the only rookie in the entire history of the NBA to do so. He made 10 starts for the Thunder in Feb, giving him an average of 16.3 points, 8.7 rebounds, and 7.7 .7 assists. What do you think about all of this? Let us know down in the comments section below. Next up, we have 76ers Joel Embiid reveals he chose the process nickname to spite NBA. I'm going to piss some people off. Being named the process has become one of the things Joel Embiid is most well known for. He recently told the world that he actually claimed the name himself in order to spite the NBA a little bit. He appeared on the Draymond Green show not long ago now and explained how he wasn't happy with the way manager Sam Himke was forced out of his role in order for Brian Colangelo to be appointed. Here is what he had to say about his nickname and why he chose it in the first place. Himke was basically forced out by, I don't want to say names, but you know I'm I'm outspoken, so I'll say it, by the NBA. I always say I don't know who, but I think that's what it was. And then that pissed me off because I felt like, yeah, sure, there was a lot of losing, which I wasn't part of because that was before I started playing. But I knew that eventually, once I started playing, it was going to change, which it did. So they basically forced him out, and I didn't like it. Around that time, the league did not like the process because it was a bunch of losing. They say it was tanking so that we were losing on purpose. So I got pissed off because they ran Sam Hinkie out of town, and I knew that they didn't like the process, all the losing stuff. Then I was like, you know what? I'm going to piss some people off. Even around the team, there was a bunch of people that didn't like that word. I remember, I won't say names, but I used to get calls about, can you please tell Joel not to mention the process name? We're trying to move on from it. I was like, watch this. Now it all makes sense why he pushed the nickname and took it upon himself. It was a weird approach and something not often seen in the NBA, so it's crazy to finally learn about it. What do you think? Let us know down in the comments section below. And now we have Jason Kidd calling LeBron James the greatest of all time, but his reasoning is a bit strange. Though there are many top players in the NBA right now, and have been over the entire sports history, there are usually two names that come up when talking about the best player in history. These names are, of course, Michael Jordan and LeBron James. Jordan was the best of his time, and James is now the best of the current era. However, when it comes to putting the two icons up against each other, fans have had a hard time deciding and putting across valid points that places one of the players above the other. Dallas Mavericks head coach Jason Kidd recently spoke about LeBron James and how amazing of a player he is. His reasoning for saying that LeBron is the greatest of all time is because of the combination of his on and off court contributions. Many agree with what he is saying, but his off court contributions seemingly should have no effect on whether he is the greatest of all time, right? When you think about it, it does make a lot of sense what Kidd is saying. LeBron is the greatest player ever, even when being compared to Michael Jordan. He is the all-time leading scorer, and he isn't even a scorer guy most of the time. LeBron is a stronger, faster, and bigger player than Jordan. He is also a better handler and even a better overall defender. The only main thing you could say Jordan is better at would be his defense. But because LeBron is stronger, it equals itself out. In terms of his off-court action, 
fans, it does make sense to include them into him being the best player of all time. James is a nice guy and comes across as very humble. He donates to charity all the time and just seems like such a great person overall. Though you could argue that these play no part in whether he is the best player or not, I would argue that it does. The person's character plays into how popular they are across the sport and the world. James is loved by basically everyone and it's hard to point out a flaw in his character or personality. He's just a nice guy who loves his sport and people. What more could you want? His off-the-court actions aren't as big of a thing or as important as his on-court ones, but they do play a part in whether he is the GOAT or not. What do you think about this? Let us know down in the comments section below. And finally, we have Kyrie Irving calling the booing Boston crowd like the scorned girlfriend. In his most recent game, literally every move that Kyrie Irving made was met with the entire crowd booing his existence. They were really loud and obnoxious to everyone else in the stadium that night. Sadly, the Brooklyn Nets point guard doesn't even expect it to change over the next few games. I know it's going to be like that for the rest of my career coming in here, Irving told reporters after the 126-120 loss to the Boston Celtics. It's like the scorned girlfriend who wants an explanation on why I left but still hoping for a text back. I'm just like, it's fun while it lasted. I think that's the relationship that makes it fun. The entire crowd managed to boo Irving during the player introductions and every time he even touched the ball. Whilst the match had about 30 seconds remaining in the fourth, the crowd began yelling Kyrie sucks during a Celtics free throw. Jason Tatum attempted to quiet them all down and even the television cameras caught a sneaky shot of Irving shaking his head and smiling at them. Clearly he hates what is going on but knows that it can't be stopped that easily. He just needs to play on and ignore what they are saying to him. This also happened to be Kyrie Irving's first game back since about mid-January and his first Boston game since last year's playoffs. This was also where he was hit by a rogue water bottle after the Nets won in game four. What do you think about this? Let us know down in the comments section below. And that's the end of today's video. The NBA has always had some super interesting stories going on, but only in certain parts of the week. Because of how the games correlate to the days of the week, news only seems to release on a weekend or at the beginning of a week. Therefore, there aren't that many relevant stories at one time. However, the stories that do shine through are incredible and really show the dedication these players have for the sport. From putting up with booing crowds to constant teammate changes, which makes the game super awkward, these players have to put up with a lot, especially with the ongoing changes to the sport. Hopefully you enjoyed this latest video. If you did, would you please let us know down in the comment section below? It would be very helpful. Make sure to like the video, comment down below, and of course, subscribe to the channel with the notification bell rung. Thank you for watching today's video. Bye!